Good morning, church. Take your Bibles and go to Genesis chapter 29. We're in the midst of a character study of Joseph, uh, excuse me, Jacob. And Jacob is an interesting character because he's, he's a little bit devious and he goes about getting things in a questionable manner. He's kind of that good old boy with not a whole lot of scruples and kind of everybody uh, gets along with him, but you have to watch your, your pocketbook when he's around. He just, he's out to get something for himself. But eventually he meets the Lord. We've already talked about his conversion at Bethel. He goes on into uh, the land back where Deborah was from, and he eventually meets up with uh, Deborah's family. That's his mother's family. And there he's going to find a wife. He actually uh, is taken to his uncle. This is, this is his mother, Rebecca's brother. And they begin to discuss. And Jacob doesn't have a whole lot at the moment. Now, he's heir to a fortune that Abraham has, but he won't receive that until his death. And he has really nothing at this point. And, and so Laban and him strike a deal. Jacob really wanted Rachel because she was pretty and he really liked her. And so he thought, I, I want her to approach Laban. And Laban says, well, what, what, are, what are your prospects, son? What, what you got to offer? <laughs> you know, and, and this was a pretty amazing thing. Jacob says, I'll, I'll work seven years, take no pay, just you know, room and board, and, and I will work for you seven years in order that I might have Rachel as my wife. And those seven years passed like a watch in the night. And uh, it says in verse number 20 of chapter 29, So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love that he had for her. Then he, Jacob goes to Laban and says, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled. That's, I've, I've done my time, that I may go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now, when you read through the rest of this, what happens is sowing and reaping. Jacob had very little feelings for his father's uh, condition of not being able to see well, uh, which Jacob's not going to be able to see well in this circumstance because of darkness and a veil. Uh, his father was older and and really didn't know what the custom was, what was going on. And Jacob's kind of that same thing. Uh, he, he wasn't aware. People were pulling the wool over his eyes. And Jacob went into his father, Isaac. And when his father says, who are you? And he said, well, I'm Esau. And he deceived his father purposely. And now his father-in-law deceives him purposely. You get that? You see the irony in that and, and uh, payback in this. Uh, whenever we go about life unconscious of other people's feelings and, and what we're doing may be hurting other people, and we think of deceptions, even though he was acting on his mother's orders, but also because God had said he would be the leader. He went about it the wrong way. He deceived his father, and now his father-in-law deceived him. Now, again, in the customs of that day, there would be a celebration. She would have a veil on. Then, of course, at darkness, uh, they would go in, consummate the marriage. The next day, he wakes up, and boy, is he surprised. That's not Rachel. She had deceived him just as he had deceived his father. And so he goes out mad. I mean, he's upset. He goes to Laban and said, our deal was for Rachel. And he says, well, listen, hey, that's not the custom of our land. Here, the older girl gets married first. Now, if you want to work seven more years, I'll give you Leah, uh, uh, Rachel also. And so, again, taking advantage of the circumstance, just like Jacob had taken advantage of his brother Esau. Esau had been out all day. He'd been hunting, came in. He's hungry. I know he's not starving to death, but he's hungry. There's food there. And he says, brother, give me some, some of that food, please. And Jacob said, what are you going to give me for it? He said, uh, uh, so, what do you mean? What do you want? He said, well, sell me your birthright. Now, here again, he's taking advantage of someone who's tired, weary, hungry. But it's Esau's fault. He despised the birthright. But Jacob, again, is 
taking advantage of people. And now it's Jacob who's in a desperate state. It's Jacob who is among a group of people who are taking advantage of him, and particularly his father-in-law. And then eventually uh, they get married as well. Um, so Jacob has two wives. Now, he didn't have to work the whole seven years. He, that was on account. He married, he married uh, Leah first, and after he fulfilled that marriage, uh, after seven days, then he married Rachel. And so now he has two wives. He eventually, over the years, would get two more wives. Uh, they're actually concubines. They're his wife's maids that he would have children by. So Jacob, again, this, this kind of, uh, he, he violated the principles of God. And, and whenever you violate the principles of God, there's going to be difficulty. And though God protected him through all this, his life was a mess. Oh yeah, he had 12 boys eventually. Uh, he has 11 while he's in that land. He has, has a daughter. But his boys wind up being poor examples of, of what children of God should be. They, they really wasn't hardly a good boy in the bunch except for, for Joseph. Judah eventually comes to faith and the rest of the brothers just seem to always be kind of out of out of sorts with God. They never really served the Lord. Jacob made a mess of his life. Though he was saved, he wasn't fully consecrated and he continued on this. So from the time he got into that land, worked seven years for uh, Leah, then worked seven years for Rachel, then another six years to get crops, he was there, or excuse me, to get uh, sheep, he was there 20 years. 20 years of his life. And boy, did he just seem to struggle. Struggle big time. Finally, God comes to him and says, it's time for you to go home. Go back to your land. And I'm not going to read through all that. You can read it yourself. Uh, but he goes back and he starts home. And now we're going to see some of the things that happen after his consecration. Eventually, he's going to come to consecration. And we'll see what happens after that. Well, let's pray together. Father, we know our lives are journeys, and through these lives, Father, we oftentimes make uh, bonehead decisions. We will oftentimes do things that are not pleasing to you, and we recognize that. Forgive us for it. We know the principle of sowing and reaping. We don't want to, to have to reap uh, difficulty in our lives, so help us to, to sow seeds of kindness, of holiness. Help us to sow seeds of wisdom that we might be able to reap the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.